2. The second point is, that God's people are not only to be a blessing, but they are to be blessed. For read the second part of the verse. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season, there shall be showers of blessing. It is somewhat singular, as a prognostication of the showers of blessings we hope to receive here, that God sent us showers on the first day of opening. If I were a believer in omens, I should pray, that as it rained the first day, so may it rain every day since. When it stops, may the chapel be shut up, for we only want it open so long as showers of grace continue to descend. First, here is sovereign mercy. Listen to these words, I will give them the shower in its season. Is it not sovereign, divine mercy, for who can say, I will give them showers, except God? Can the false prophet who walks amongst the benighted Hottentots? He says he is a rainmaker, and can. Give them showers, but can he do it? Is there an imperial monarch, or the most learned man on earth, who can say, I will give them the showers in their season? No, there is only one fist wherein all the clouds are held, there in only one hand in which all the channels of the mighty ocean above the firmament are contained, there is only one voice that can speak to the clouds, and bid them beget the rain. Out of whose womb came the ice? And the hoary frost of heaven, who hath gendered it? Who sendeth down the rain upon the earth? Who scattereth the showers upon the green herb? Do not I, the Lord? Who else could do it? Is not rain in God's power? And who could send it, except him? We know that Catholics pretend that they can get grace without getting it from God directly, for they believe that God puts all his grace into the Pope, and then that runs down into smaller pipes, called cardinals and bishops, through which it runs into the priests, and, by turning the tap with a shilling, you can get as much grace as you like. But it is not so with God's grace. He says, I will give them showers. Grace is the gift of God, and is not to be created by man. Notice, next, it is needed grace. I will give them showers. What would the ground do without showers? You may break the clods, you may sow your seeds, but what can you do without the rain? Ah! You may prepare your barn, and sharpen your sickles, but your sickles will be rusted before you have any wheat, unless there are showers. They are needed. So is the divine blessing. In vain Apollo sow the seed. And Paul may plant in vain. In vain you come here, in vain you labor, in vain you give you money. Till God the plenteous shower bestows. And sends salvation down. Then, next, it is plenteous grace. I will send them showers. It does not say, I will send them drops, but I will send them showers. It seldom rains but it pours. So it is with grace. If God gives a blessing, he usually gives it in such a measure that there is not room enough to receive it. Where are we going to hold God's blessing that we have obtained already? I told the people on Thursday that God had promised us, that if we brought the tithes into the storehouse, he would send us such a blessing that we would not have room to hold it. We have tried it, and the promise has been fulfilled, as it always will be as long as we rely upon it. Plenteous grace. Ah. We shall want plenteous grace, my friends, plenteous grace to keep us humble, plenteous grace to make us prayerful, plenteous grace to make us holy, plenteous grace to make us zealous, plenteous grace to make us truthful, plenteous grace to preserve us through this life, and at last to land us in heaven. We cannot do without showers of grace. How many are there here that have been dry in a shower of grace? Why, there is a shower of grace here, but how is it that it does not fall on some of the people? It is because they put up the umbrella of their prejudice, and though they sit here, even as God's people sit, even when it rains, they have such a prejudice of God's word, they do not want to hear it, they do not want to love it, and it runs off. Again. Nevertheless, the showers are there, and we will thank God for them. Where they do fall. Again, it is seasonable grace. I will give them the shower in its season. There is nothing like seasonable grace. There are fruits, you know, that are best in their season, and they are not good at any other time, and there are graces that are good in their season, but we do not always require them. A person vexes and irritates me, I want grace just at that moment to be patient, I have not got it, and I get angry, ten minutes after I am ever so patient, but I have not had grace in its season. The promise is, I will give them the shower in its season. 
Ah! Poor waiting soul, what is thy season this morning? Is it the season of drought? Then that is the season for showers. Is it a season of great heaviness and black clouds? Then that is the season for showers. What is your season this morning, businessman? Lost money all the week, have you? Now is the season to ask for showers. It is. Night time, now the dew falls. The dew does not fall in the day, it falls in. The night, the night of affliction, trial, and trouble. There stands the promise, only go and plead it. I will give them the shower in its season. We have one thought more, and then we have done. Here is a varied blessing. I will give thee showers of blessing. The word is in the plural. All kinds of blessings God will send. The rain is all of one kind when it comes, but grace is not all of one kind, or it does not produce the same effect. When God sends rain upon the church, he sends showers of blessing. There are some ministers who think that if there is a shower on their church, God will send a shower of work. Yes, but if he does, he will send a shower of comfort. Others think that God will send a shower of gospel. Truth. Yes, but if he sends that, he will send a shower of gospel holiness. For all God's blessings go together. They are like the sweet sister graces that danced hand in hand. God sends showers of blessings. If he gives comforting grace, he will also give converting grace, if he makes the trumpet blow for the bankrupt sinner, he will also make it sound a shout of joy for the sinner that is pardoned and forgiven. He will send showers of blessing. Now, then, there is a promise in that Bible. We have tried to explain and enlarge upon it. What shall we do with it? In that book there hidden lies. A pearl of price unknown. Well, we have examined this rich promise, we as a church are looking at it, we are saying, is that ours? I think most of the members will say, it is, for God has poured out upon us showers of blessing in their season. Well, then, if the promise is ours, the precept is ours, as much as the promise. Ought we not to ask God to continue to make us a blessing? Some say I did so and so when I was a young man, but supposing you are fifty, you are not an old man now. Is there not something you can do? It is all very well to talk about what you have done, but what are you doing now? I know what it is with some of you, you shine brightly once, but your candle has not been snuffed lately, and so it does not shine so well. May God take away some of the worldly cares, and snuff the candles a little. You know there were snuffers and snuffer trays provided in the temple for all the candles, but no. Extinguishers, and if there should be a poor candle here this morning, with a terrific snuff that has not given a light for a long while, you will have no extinguisher from me, but I hope you will always have a snuffing. I thought the first time when I came to the lamps this morning it would be to snuff them. That has been the intention of my sermon, to snuff you a little, to set you to work for Jesus Christ. O Zion, shake thyself from the dust. O Christian, raise thyself from thy slumbers. Warrior, put on thy armor. Soldier, grasp thy sword. The captain sounds the alarm of war. O sluggard! Why sleepest thou? O heir of heaven, has not Jesus done so much for thee, that thou shouldst live to him? O beloved brethren, purchased with redeeming mercies, girt about with loving kindness and with tenderness. Now for a shout of sacred joy. And after that, to the battle. The little seed has grown to this, who knoweth what it shall be? Only let us together strive, without variance. Let us labor for Jesus. Never did men have so fair an opportunity, for the last hundred years. There is a tide that, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Shall you take it at the flood? Over the bar, at the harbor's mouth. O ship of heaven, let thy sails be out, let not thy canvas be furled, and the wind will blow us across the seas of difficulty that lie before us. Oh! that the latter day might have its dawning even in this despised habitation. O oh my God! From this place cause the first wave to spring, which shall move another, and then another, till the last great wave shall sweep over the sands of time, and dash against the rocks of eternity, echoing as it falls, Hallelujah! 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 The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. <laughs>